What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. We're all set, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Six ways to Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Guys, we're excited to have you here. If you could please do me a quick favor, properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are, plug and promote anything and everything. Yeah, so we're uh, Six Ways to Saturday. My name is Morgan. I'm Tyler. And I'm Phil, and we are in the great state of New Jersey. Yep. Indubitably. And then a uh, new, new single came out, new single Proper Dose is out. Yep. Uh, just dropped last Friday. Really stoked about it. We actually just finished recording our first EP, and we're really excited to put it out. We're uh, thinking about dropping it on April nineteenth. <gasps> break it! Is that Whoa. break it? Is that breaking news? Is that breaking news right there? That is yeah. actually yeah. That is pretty Hell actually. yeah! We didn't that yet. Hell yeah! That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, it here first. <laughs> guys, we're ex we are very excited for this interview. I, we have a ton of questions for you. Uh, first, who who did you go to to record the EP? Uh, good question. So we were kind of on a time crunch because we really wanted to get that first song out uh, by the time that Squid Game was coming out because we really wanted to, you know, ride the wave of opportunity and all that. And so we found this dude. His name is Will Baker uh, in Brooklyn, and he owns uh, Slide Studios BK. So he was the first one that we went to for Fantasy, which was our first single. We did a pretty good job. So we got in there, did the thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, for the rest of the EP, we were working with John DeClario of Not A Recording. Uh, he's famously known for working for uh, My Chemical Romance's first album. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. And, and then uh, how like how long in advance, Phil, did you know, okay, I shot I shot the Squid Game stuff. I know I have about six or seven months until the world sees this. I, I guess that kind of went into the timing of making sure fantasy drops right around the same time. How much time is there in between? Uh, you you so know we, how it ended before Let's Get to Work to time <laughs> yeah so we we wrapped uh in february of last year um and so we had a fair amount of time but i was still living in hawaii at the time so i had to move back home and then we had to get the band together and then we had to start recording we had to start writing doing all the stuff and we we're all pretty busy over the summer too these guys also have like full-time gigs uh mm -hmm. i'm a full-time law student <laughs> it's not very I, cool <laughs> I, I work in outpatient uh surgery care dang you guys are yeah. big time you guys are big yeah, time so we, we're stretching a lot of different directions. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I'm gonna let Spaz ask a question or two, but I gotta ask about the Brazil flag. Who who's all yeah. the autographs you guys have behind you? Uh, this is actually so I'm I'm Brazilian. Uh, that's where I was born and raised uh, till I was eight. My mom is Brazilian. My dad's American. Um, but I also played for the Brazilian national quadball team, and these are the signatures of the team that I played for uh, when we won our first Pan American championship. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, Spaz, yeah. what, what what questions do you have for the band? Um, what up, Spaz? <laughs> What's up, brother? Yeah, so, I mean, it, this is obviously local band Smokehouse. I mean, Squid Game is pretty cool because I, I like the actual Netflix special, and then I like watching the, the, the actual game show. And I was rooting free, long hair. I love it. Um, I had no hey. idea that you were a musician. So when BG had talked to me about you coming on, uh, it was about a week ago when he was talking about trying to set it up. I immediately start getting on the Google. I'm like, who are these guys? Who are these guys? Um, I love your music. I, I'm a, I'm in a, I'm a little heavier band, but... Um, I wouldn't say you guys are pop at all. I would just, you guys are alternative and you guys kick ass. So that being said, was your intent, like after you got on the, the game show, did you think that was going to boost your band? I mean, obviously you didn't do that for the sole purpose of being for your band, right? Yeah. So, so actually, so we, we started out in a band in college. Um, and that was all, ago. yeah, 10 years ago, actually, almost to the day. Oh, wow. uh, Same band we, name or different band name? Different band yeah, name. Different. Back then we were called Crime Alert. Oh my god! A, a very, a very cool name for a college band. It's an inside time. joke. But... Yeah. That, was, that was, Morgan, you came up with that because of the law, right? You're the law student. <laughs> no, that's funny. I did come up with it. But not, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Um. So and so that that sort of was us really act like we 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 were taking it seriously. Like we really wanted to like try to make it as musicians. Like that was like all of our collective dreams was to you know be in a band to be that kind of stuff and not have to sort of settle for graduating and then 
working like normal jobs, which is kind of what happened. <laughs> what ended up happening. Um, so that sort of happened, and then and then uh, we we sort of stopped playing together because everybody just got busy with jobs and work and life and uh, that kind of stuff. And so then we always wanted to get back together. Like we would always be like, yeah, you know, we gotta get the band back together. We gotta get the band back together, or whatever. Um, and then Morgan uh, uh, wrote all the songs for our original EP that came out back in college. Um, and then uh, you, you can tell the the text. Oh yeah, it was like um, I had like a 2 a.m. drunk epiphany. And I was in the back of an Uber going home from I don't know somewhere in, in New York City, and I text Phil and Tyler. I'm like, guys, we gotta get the band back together. And that's quite literally how we reformed. They were like, yeah, yeah sure, let's do it. I'm like, all right, sick. That was easy. No hesitation. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, and Phil You're just right. like, no hesitation. We're in. Two o one a.m. They're right. They're respond back that fast. We're in. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And so it was something like we always like we always like wanted to do and so then we were like yeah okay right, let's do it and then the show happened and then we were like okay like this is actually like kind of a big deal like this is our like I I, I like straight up broke my NDA when I told them about like sort of what happened and like <laughs> what the deal was and stuff and be like hey like just so you guys know like this is a big opportunity like we're gonna get like a lot of publicity or whatever but in this like very oh, short yeah. period of time so we have to be ready and so that's basically what we've been grinding for ride that wave man hell yeah, yeah. okay so my next question is I'm a drummer uh, who's the drummer Oh, cool! Actually, so uh, are you are you in a yeah. band right now? Because we, 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 we currently uh, we're, we're currently searching if there's any drummers, any yeah. drummers uh, need a drummer. in the chat. Yeah. Well, he yeah. he lives in Northern California though, so, so it's gonna be a little tricky for gigs oh, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No a great time it's a little yeah. weekend hey, drive, need, real quick. If you ever need session work, dude? I'm always willing to do it. I've got a pro producer. He was in Skylet Drive, and Nick Moore, uh, Miller. Oh, so if wow. you ever need drummers, I mean, we if you ever need studio drummers, we've got a bunch. So absolutely, just hit yeah. Me up. absolutely, yeah. So we yeah. we've been kind of working our drums in with uh, with like Logic and sort of with like you know different like drum programs, like you know tailoring them and making them the the, the cool pop punk drums that like we want to have so badly in our music. But uh, definitely, we're we're looking at playing our first shows now soon, um, and we will be needing a drummer if there's any. So you're gonna be chat. a four, you'll be a four piece eventually. Yes. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, who yeah. who inspired you guys to just want to pick up your instruments in the first place when you were when you were kids? I know this answer is probably different for each of you individually, but uh, when you were four or five years old, usually your parents are playing something. Like, who inspired you to want to pick up guitar or or pick up a microphone in the first place? That's easy. Yeah. So, all right. So back when was it? Back in two thousand four, American Idiot came out. My friend was like, "Check this album out." We go on before Spotify, On Demand Music Choice, we put up uh, American Idiot, and I was like, him. I want to be him. <laughs> and then, like, soon after, I just picked up the guitar and just didn't look back. And, yeah. Are you going to the Green Day tour that they just announced recently? Unfortunately not. But I am going to Blink, some 41. I got okay. an Alkaline Trio show next week. I'm oh. pretty hyped. See? Yeah. That's awesome. Who would you say, Phil, uh, made you want to be a musician? Uh, for me, it was actually my dad. Uh, my dad uh, grew up playing guitar. He was always a big guitarist. He's big into like classic rock and blues and stuff. And so I always heard him uh, like playing in the house. And so when I was 12, I was like, ah, yeah, I want to be cool too. I want to, you know, I want to be him playing instrument. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's sort of what got me into it. And then, yeah, like American Idiot, you know, Blink 182, um, stuff like that is like really got the ball rolling. And then I was like, oh, sick. Like, you know, we could actually do this. Um, and then I, I played in a couple bands in, in high school, which was fun. And then just like, I just honestly, for me, it's like less so like playing the instrument, but more just like putting on a performance. Like I feel like that's where like I really like get the enjoyment out of it is like playing on stage, you know, getting getting uh, the crowd into it and sort of sharing that experience with like the love and the music and then sort of like all that energy, you know, like that's where I, I really get uh, the the passion for for performing. Cool. Same yeah, I have I have a similar story to the rest of them. I mean, I think the two bands that got me into sort of rock in general were Blink and Lincoln Park, and uh, but then I heard American Idiot one day and it was all over for me. Um, that made me pick up a guitar. And then I think I started singing because of Paramore. Um, but it was it was mainly American Idiot that kind of that really made me like who I am today. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to see Green Day in September with Rancid and and I forget who else is there. Oh. But uh, they're oh, oh it's the Pumpkins are there. Oh. Smashing Pumpkins are there. But uh, I think they're oh, playing. Sick. I believe they're playing American Idiot in its entirety. They're playing two albums in its entirety, and I forget the second album. I think it's but... American Idiot and Dookie. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's probably yeah, the, it's arguably it's like the two best ones. Love... Yeah, the two mm. best albums. Dookie just had its 30th anniversary, yeah. like, a, like a few months ago, I think. 
Oh my god. So yeah, I arguably the two be best ones right set. there. Yeah. You got to hey BG, you got to tell me if Rancid plays any Op Eyes songs. You, oh my god, I love Operation Ivy so much. Um uh, Phil, I heard like I guess we had uh, watched uh, the was it fantasy lyric video today, and for some reason I'm I'm rather old. I had like a Angels and Airwaves vibe to uh, to that song. It was awesome. It's like <laughs> if uh, <laughs> what would you be doing if you weren't a musician or you didn't have the drive to be a musician? Would you be an actor? Would you medical field? What would what would each one of you? What would you guys be doing outside of your normal job plus the band? Like what what's your ultimate end game if you had you could wish for anything um well real quick exactly it actually is funny that you say that it reminded you of angels and airwaves because me, me and tyler especially are like huge angels and airwaves fans like like grew up on on love and love part two like that came out when we were in high school so that was like a huge definitely a huge influence for us uh, yeah. musically. i empire all that oh my god yeah those are the days uh uh well for for me i definitely feel like my sort of like passions and my um I guess like strengths like rely in performing and sort of putting on like a show basically I, that's that's kind of like I, I grew up doing that for my friends I grew up doing that for my family like anytime I'm out anytime I'm like whatever like I always like I feel like I'm like putting on you know something you know so I, I like you know entertaining people and you know cracking jokes and and just being like a funny sort of relatable person so I feel like I was born I was born to do that and I was born to be a good friend like those are the things that I was definitely like put on this earth to do one of them I got solid the second one we are still working on but by <laughs> golly we <will> yeah. there. <laughs> so so Phil while, while you're on the show uh is it safe to say that Morgan and Tyler are, are two of your best friends absolutely I, I know I know all. earlier you mentioned that you I kind of you kind of like broke the NDNA did did they have any idea <laughs> how you did when you got back to Jersey or or Hawaii to, to hang out with them? Or did, was that like, you cannot say anything about that part? Yeah, no, so it was kind of a slow burn because I, first of all, was terrified of Netflix and being sued. Uh, so <laughs> uh, because I obviously like, I didn't expect to make it that far. So when I, before I got cast for the show, I told, or well, like after I was cast and before I left to go uh, do the show, I told everybody, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be on Squid Game, I'm gonna be, you know, like, whatever, like, for, like, Netflix, because I really didn't think it was gonna matter. I straight up thought that I was gonna get out of Red Light, Green Light, or, like, one of the first games or whatever, and I was totally at peace with that, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go have fun, do whatever. I did not expect to make it nearly as far as I did, so then when I got out, everybody was like, oh, so, like, how was Squid Game? Like, how was, like, whatever, and I was like, oh, no, that was something else, uh, you know? <laughs> I sort of had to hide it for a while, but then as, um, as we sort of start, we got back together and then we were starting to write new music and stuff. And I really, I like basically I needed everyone to be on, on the same page. Cause like, you know, being in a band, it's, it's, it's awesome that we're like really good friends and we get along and we, and we make good music that we're really passionate about, but we also, you know, in a way have to be strategic, like with uh, like business wise and stuff. And as you know, business partners, it's important to everybody be on the same page and everybody have all the knowledge. And so I, I talked to them uh, individually and I was like, Hey, so, Here's the, and I told I, I embellished. I told them the whole story. I was like, oh, you know, and then this game happened, and then this, and then I got to the end, and I had them on the edge of their seats, and I was like, yeah, and then I played rock paper scissors for four point five six million dollars, <laughs> and I fucking lost. <laughs> right, yeah, rock paper scissors. When I saw the the, the finale, I was like. Wow, really? I was I was I didn't know what the hell was gonna happen, but it's like <laughs> she she didn't break you off anything. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it was, actually it was it was it was spelled out in our contracts that we were not allowed to share so, oh yep. okay i'm, I'm sure uh, i'm sorry Spess. no i didn't no, i was just saying yeah i knew that because I, I i guess my had not gotten paid yet and i was like on tmz and i was like oh you know maybe her and phil split it and then they, it came out said no part of their contract they could not agree to split it so you never know anyways but <laughs> you know <laughs> most of the time when we have guests on the show they are completely thrown off by the fact that we do a trivia part where we ask you to bring so bring hot sauce did you guys yeah. bring hot sauce you know we got that good the hotter hot you sauce. brought is the hotter i'm gonna go i've got about 10 behind me would you say that's fairly hot or not too bad yeah no it's, it's pretty hot uh <laughs> okay cool I'm gonna go for some ghostly garlic hot sauce right here. It's got it's got some kick, but it's it's tasty. The cool thing is he's good at coming up with some crazy questions. So the cool thing about the trivia part is uh, you guys get to pick the trivia topic. Is there a movie or TV show that you three could agree on? Where if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, how Not could I stump you? All three of you seen it so many times. Watch, I get them all wrong. Yeah, right. we, we, we got we got Star Wars on lock. We got Avatar: The Last Airbender on lock, and we got 
like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so any of those. Star Wars got, sounds like a safe got bet. Sci-fi, anime, and then Bravo TV. <laughs> Let me start with Star Wars. Like Star Wars. Yeah. Is there is there a particular Star Wars episode that you've seen more than the rest, Tyler? Ooh, ooh, episode one, Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. Phantom oh. Menace. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spaz, Spaz, shoot off another question. Let me look up some Phantom Phantom Menace trivia real quick. Uh, it seems see confident here. too, so I gotta look for some hard. Read this horribly. <laughs> always does this. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm um, in contact with the Prime Minister of Kamiya. Yeah. <laughs> They're building a droid army using a bounty hunter named Kango Fett. <laughs> so, I, they always ask this question uh, of any band, but Phil and, and obviously the band. What, uh, given your status of celebrity, and hopefully it takes you as far as it can take you musically and your band, you know, I wish you guys all the best, but what would be, and Phil, you seem, and don't take this the wrong way, and I, I know you're from Hawaii, but um, you're like a sweetheart type of dude, very kind, gentle soul. That's what I, I take from the way you talk and just watching you on um, Squid Game. But what <laughs> advice do you have to other bands, people that want to be in a band that are just starting garage bands, what kind of advice would you give them to like um, encourage the daily grind in music? Um, well, I definitely think having a passion for it is like obvious, you know, it's, it's the, the most important thing. Um, I think experimenting with your sound too, like, you know, like we take a lot of our inspiration from like pop punk and from like the OGs, like, you know, Blink and Green Day and stuff like that. But we also, we're trying to put like our own kind of like modern spin on it. So it's it's fun, as fun as it is, as it is to like play covers and start to just regurgitate whatever, like push the boundaries a little bit, you know, try out some different sounds. Like some like some of the songs that we've been recording, like some of the coolest parts are parts that we just came up with like kind of like on the spot. And we were just like experimenting with sounds or we pressed the wrong button and they made like a crazy like and we're like, whoa, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think a lot, a lot of like the songwriting process is really just trying to like capture that lightning in a bottle. You know, like you have a cool idea and you want to like pursue it as much as possible. But honestly, I think the, thing that makes us as a band really special is that we are each like very uniquely talented in our own ways. Like Morgan is a phenomenal lyricist, a phenomenal singer. Tyler's a phenomenal guitar player, does really good like instrumentals and stuff like that. Um, I have 50,000 followers, Uh, (laughs) you know, like everyone, everyone contributes something. I I think, I think sort of like diversifying your experience, you know, taking a little bit from here, a little bit from there, um, I think is what really helps us at least, you know, be be as as successful as we are. So your bandmates are using you for the follows. I got it. No, 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 no. I'm using them. (laughs) Let's let's not get it mixed up. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's a chat question real quick. Uh, Phil, do you have a favorite character in Avatar Last Airbender and why? What did you think of the Netflix series? Oh, yeah. Um, I, they're also fantastic. I really identify with Sokka a lot because I feel like I'm kind of goofy and just like, wow, you know? Uh, but I feel like as I get older, I'm really, I, I hope to become someday somebody's like Uncle Iroh, you know, where I can just sit down and be like, hey, man, like, but, but more like the version from that 70s show where it's like the old guy's like, hey, man, like, uh, you guys want to smoke a doobie and talk about like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to me, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I honestly loved the Netflix ad- adaptation. I thought it was fantastic. I really loved it. I know a lot of people didn't, um, but I am very pro the idea of enjoying things casually and not thinking about it too critically or seriously. <laughs> um, and so I really liked it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this this is mainly for Tyler, but you guys got to help him out. We got some Star Wars trivia, and it's going now, now. <laughs> Let's go. It's, it's a little bit of an elaborate question. Oh. Upon returning to Naboo, the city of uh, Ata- upon returning to Naboo, the city of Ata Ganga is found in ruins thanks to the Trade Federation. But according to Jar Jar, in the times of crisis, the Gungans retreat to an area called what? Oh. Dang! I know I'm a disgrace. <laughs> oh, that one's so Jar 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 specifically hard, says this hard. in times of crisis. The Gungans retreat to an area called what? Yeah, that, that's that's when the, the guy goes like, oh, like, we saw help the Jedi in the wall. <laughs> 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 oh, I cannot remember what it was called, I know. though. Yeah. yeah. It was like it was like a little um, grassy, it's, like trees. It's, it's gonna come to me field. after this is done. Yeah, we're gonna wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night and be like, oh, it was, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Titty City or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I hear is... Hot sauce. Hot sauce. 
That's so when you say hot sauce, what is what is that? What, what does that so mean? So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do whether you get it right or wrong, I'm gonna do it with you guys. I'm just gonna go swig done that fast. Okay. Bam Tyler, done. I'm no, I'm fine, I'm fine you sure? Well, <laughs> wait, so, let, me, let me get a shot glass. Hang on. <laughs> oh, you guys are going in shot glass style. Yeah, don't be like me and chug the whole thing and then you fill it the next day. That's yeah. for sure. Definitely That's don't correct. do that. <laughs> Yeah, we in a we in a post pandemic society. We are gonna <laughs> Morgan. What do you have? What do you have right here on your arm? It looks like a it looks like a painting or a picture or something, right? Yeah, right where you're pointing. Can you see this? I don't know if the mic is coming. I I, I can see it. Yeah. What, it's right. um, it's like a girl looking up at the sky, but there's two hands like creating the planets, so they're on like marionette strings. Oh, so cool. I, you know, like, creating your own reality and stuff. That's way you know, cool. Little, little heady for the evening, but Hell, it's also a lyric of one of our songs. Is it Marionette Street? Oh, right. <laughs> I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we got the hot sauce. Is it just Tyler that is, is the sufferer? Uh, oh, you already did the buzzer because. Yeah. Damn. Oh, are you still thinking? <laughs> no, it did. Did you remember? Yeah, but it's too late. Oh, what is it? No. It, he already wrote Too bad it. we couldn't do like splatter packs and like. Yeah, the answer. What do you think the answer is? I don't think I've said it, but what do you think the answer it's, is? You're saying like the lake, right? Where they retreated to because it starts with the P, right? No, it does not. No, it's, not like it's called it's called the the sacred place. That oh. they just call it they just call it the sacred place. Anyway, cheers. That's fucking gross. Cheers. <laughs> I'll do one too, just for funsies. Cheers. Right. Yolo, as the kids say. While while you guys are suffering, break down for me what we can expect the rest of 2024. From six ways to Saturday. I know you're not allowed to tell me every little detail. <laughs> give us, give us a little tidbits of some things coming out. I know we talked about the EP April nineteenth. Anything beyond that that we can look forward to? Yeah. So, like you said, the EP drops April nineteenth. We have, uh, I think, three songs that are unreleased at the moment. Um, I Good. personally think they're our best work, but you know that's up for determination. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then um, April. 20th, we're 20th, hoping yeah, to play our first show as as Six Ways to Saturday. Smoke weed every day. Um, April 20th, you say? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, the, it's like a real convenient date. but um, You just have that button unlocked. <laughs> 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 but yeah, if anyone's in the uh, New York or Jersey City area, it's going to be around there. Mm -hmm. um, and then after the release date, we're going to be focusing on playing shows and, you know, the PA, New Jersey, New York area. Um, hopefully the summer, like hit the, hit them as hard as possible and really get get to it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, uh, Spaz, do you have uh, a final question or two? Yeah. Um... I'm looking at one more trivia. We got to do a redemption one. <laughs> yeah, um, so let me see. I, I had a question. Son of a bitch. Um, oh, yeah. So when you guys chose the, uh, chose the name Six Ways to Saturday, I know it's kind of close to, you know, the whole thing about Six Ways to Sunday and all that stuff. Uh, did you guys, like, research the name? Because I do know that there was another band named that in 2011. Does that concern you at all? Um, do you want the lawyer to take this? Yeah. Was yeah, that, it, was, it was for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, according to trademark law, <laughs> um yeah no so we we looked into it and then we we didn't find anything and then mm. but the day we chose the name and like agreed on the socials and everything we found some like local band with a facebook page um and we were like god, god damn it but it was like too late at that point um but i know that assuming we're talking about the same people they are very much disbanded and uh as long as we continue to use the name six ways to saturday legally we are Okay, so the fault you can always add a number after it, like everyone yeah. else. Well, <laughs> Morgan would know. She's she's the law. She's the law expert, so she she would know that one because of like certain like tra trademark law, copyright law, and, and especially for entertainment law. God, I wish I was uh, you know knowledgeable with that stuff because I've had to deal with it with my own stuff at nonprofit. But let's just say you guys get signed and a label comes in, whether big, if, if I wouldn't say small because small is like. I mean, I wouldn't do it for a small label, but let's just say a big label comes in and says, "Hey guys, we love what you're doing. You know, this has a re this type of music has a resurgence. The only thing is, we'll give you let's just say a million dollars or whatever the contract deal is, um, and it's not a it's not a screw job, a 360 deal. It's it's a good, decent contract, but you got to change your name. What are you gonna do? That's the day that we change it to six slays to Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> we slay all day, baby. Looks for me. 
I love it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Phil, I have a special guest that wants to come in and, and say oh, up, say dude? something to you real quick. This is my seven-year-old lyric right here. Hi, Phil. I was rooting hey. for you on Squid Game. Oh, and thanks so much, man. I'm a big fan of you. He says, <laughs> he's a, what? He's a, he's a big fan. Oh, thanks mm -hmm. so much, man. I really appreciate that. You know, it's people like you that really kept me going the whole way. I thought about giving up a lot, but, you know, knowing guys like you were, were shooting for me out there, that's what really got us through. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, awesome. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice meeting you too, man. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs> he can't hear most of the other responses, but because uh, of the headphones, but uh, yeah, I told him earlier today. I was like, hey, I was like, hey, we're, you remember? Do you remember Phil from from the show? Blah blah. And he was like, can I come on? He never does this. Like, Aww. can can I come on and say hello? And I was like, yeah, just one time to say, you know. Well, we were totally rooting for you, man. We, we really uh, were. Thanks, so, I, I do have one more question, BJ. I'm sorry. Yeah, no uh, problem. No problem. Because and, and, I deal with mental health, uh, with you know, music and what I do and, and, and my other stuff. So mental health, you know, music helps out a lot. So with Squid Game, and, and like you said, you wanted to quit a lot, da, 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 da. What helped you push through? Like, really, it, was it taxing on your mental health? You know, again, because... I'm not asking you like the divulge stuff you can't, but like there's a lot of stuff that we don't see. So like, was it very taxing on you? Yeah, it, it definitely was pretty taxing. I think that's also like kind of part of the challenge is, is not only, you know, the games and sort of the social trials and all that kind of stuff, but it's really just like, it, it tests your endurance. Like how long are you willing to go without seeing sunlight, without seeing your phone, without having like a proper meal, without having a proper sleep. So that, all that kind of stuff kind of compounds towards the end. Um, and so it definitely did take a little bit of a toll. I, I like to play around and say that it was like equal parts fun and traumatic. Like, you know, it was it was tough, but it was also cute to like, you know, get to make so many friends and stuff. Uh, but it was I mean, it was it was what we signed up for. You know, like we from day one, like knew that we were signing up for a, a reality competition where it was going to be tough and there were going to be trials and tribulations. Um, and so it was just kind of part of it. So for me, like it was mostly just like trying to stay grounded, you know, not I mean, that, that's just kind of like my personality in general is like I don't I don't like freak out too easily like I don't you know try to start drama or like get under anyone's skin or anything like that so I think something that helped me personally get through is just sort of be myself and just try to enjoy the moment for what it was like I every single game thought that that was probably going to be my last game and I was totally at peace with that I was like you know what this has been fun I've made some friends it's been an interesting experience but I'm ready to go home whenever um and sort of I think that is kind of what carried me through to the end because I never set my expectations too high because realistically like one in 456 like there's no way you know uh, so going in, I really had no, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would make it as far as I did. And honestly, the biggest thing at the end, like when I lost that last game, the biggest thing I felt was relief because I was like, you know what? It's over. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's over. Um, I get to go home to my bed. I get to see my girlfriend. I get to eat some good food, you know? And so, and so that was kind of the, what, what carried me through. And knowing that I have the best friends in the whole world to make music with and make the most of this opportunity. <laughs> well, well, best friends, I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball in on this next trivia. Get Tyler, him, Tyler him, I'm going back to the Star Wars again. But I, but I ask I ask that you put you put the hot shot glass. Sell all my Star Wars. Can you can you put the hot shot glass into Morgan's hand for this one? Yikes. I know nothing of Star Wars. Right. It's on Tyler to see oh, if you have to do the shot yeah. or not. That's, Fill it up. That's, <laughs> and we're going back to Phantom Phantom Menace one more time. Okay, where okay. where do Anakin and Queen Amidala first meet? It's an easy one. Yeah, Tatooine. Oh, dude. <laughs> no, okay, it's more specific than that. Oh, oh say. Otto's junkyard. That is correct. That is correct. Well done. You're safe, Morgan. You're safe. You are the chosen one. In in Dubu, yeah, yeah. I heard Palpatine. Do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Uh, is there anything that we out. that we did not discuss today, to guys, that you guys want to plug or promote, or something that we should we think we should know about? Uh, I don't know. That. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. So check us out. So we're we're we like to pride ourselves in being like kind of part of the new wave of pop punk, where we're you know sticking to the roots and sort of getting the old stuff, but with like a modern twist. So definitely check us out if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, we're on socials. We're putting out 
as funny as TikToks as we can make. Uh, so if you're if you like comedy and entertainment, check that. us out. Uh, and yeah, that's I mean uh, for the three of us, I think that's kind of our big next move. So you know that's that's kind of what we're we're putting our whole lives into. We're really stoked about what's to come. Um, and we're really proud of this new EP, so we're really stoked. It's coming out April 19th. Do is there a, is there a title for for the EP? I was Wait, just, I just said, oh my god, I just said, do we leak it? You know what? Just do it. Yolo, as the kids say. <laughs> yeah, little uh, Yolo. Yeah, so it's called "So Much for Forever." Whoa! <laughs> why why that title? And do you recall two or three titles that almost made it, but they got scrapped at the last second to go with that? Well, there was the other one. Um, why that title first it just went with the theme of the album there's a i would say a majority of the songs in the album relate to um a, a failed relationship so so much for forever kind of fit perfectly um what else did we talk about it was uh it was like, every, everything's gonna be okay or what if everything what if, what if, what if it okay? what if it turn uh what if it all if, turned out okay or what something? What if it turns out okay or something like that? Yeah. yeah what if then, it turns out okay? I think we had another one too that I just. There was a up. whole list. Yeah, they uh, they scrapped Phil's butthole, so we weren't we weren't allowed to call it that. Um, <laughs> it was a Phil's, hey. <laughs> Squid Game, uh, Phil's bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> electric, electric boogalow too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, this is a lot of fun. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to, to come hang on the show. Um, I don't know if this is accepted or not, but would you like to to rip it one time ganja wise or, or should we should we just call it a day? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we so yeah, so we I, I took a break from smoking for a really long time and I just started. But my, my ex smoked all of my weed in my house. And so I have none left. We're in my house right now. And then Tyler forgot to bring his. And Morgan is also here. So. I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll do an alternative. Yeah, we got a bottle I'll do of wine. alternative. I'll take I'll it. I'll take it. Che cheers, guys. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much. Though. April nineteenth. Yeah. EP is out. Six ways to Saturday. Let's go. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you all so much. This was a blast. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Hey, so uh, I so I sent you a DM, so don't worry. I'm not like a stalker or anything, but I, I oh, gave I you some you. information. Okay, cool. So Thank I just want you to put the, the the DM with the face. So <laughs> I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna edit this tonight, and I'll send you guys the link regarding like this being on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, for like oh, promo cool. tag tagging right. a bunch of stuff, whatever. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. We really appreciate it. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. If you're ever in California, you. dude, especially Northern Cal, like San Francisco, Sacramento, please let me know. I want to come hang out with you guys. You guys seem like a lot of fun. For real. Absolutely. We'll definitely yeah, bring, bring some people out to the show. Absolutely. We love right. making new friends. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks again for doing us. We appreciate it. Thank thanks you so much. Mahalo. See ya. Okay, guys.